Hey guys, Nick here with GearNut, and today we're looking at another portable projection system. I know, GearNut, what is with you and projectors lately, right? Well, being here shut at home and not being able to go to the movies has really, really affected me. So, I've been getting into projectors for a while. I've wanted to have a nice system. Unfortunately, I don't have a room that I can dedicate just a a movie theater to. So the wife said, hey, if you can make it portable, you can take it down, you can make it disappear, then you can have it. And so that's what I've been looking into. So as soon as I seen Elite Screens, uh, I think they're EliteProjectors.com, they came out with this really cool kit. So this is a complete portable projector system. Now this is not a cinema theater that's portable. This is like carrying around a 55 inch or a 60 inch or a 100 inch TV, depending on how big your projection screen is. So I believe it's like 60 inch to 100 inch with their setup. This is the Mosaic Go Sport. So it does have a portable battery in the projector and it's pretty freaking cool. Oh my goodness. So these two bags house the entire projector with it. You might have to have a laptop bag or maybe a, I don't know, fire stick if you got Wi-Fi or a, a DVD player and an extension cord. Just depends on what you're going to play or what you're going to do with it. So, but 13 pounds, two bags. Let's take a look at it and I'll tell you what I think. If you're wondering about it, I like it a lot. The wife said if I want it, since this is on loan, you know, I have to send it back. If I want it, I'm going to have to sell some stuff. So I'm looking at selling some stuff because <laughs> I like this system. It's super portable. So we're going to take a look at it. I'm going to show you the short throw projector, which is just jaw dropping. I absolutely love it. There are some little quirks with the screen. There are some little quirks with the projector, but this is the first run of this product. I really like it. So let's take a look at Let's take a look at the projector first. Let's get to it. All right, so inside your projection bag, your projector bag, I guess you should say, I actually take and I keep the user manual in there. I actually put the screen in here. You could keep this in your, I guess your, your screen or your frame bag, but I just toss that in there. And I, I would recommend keeping these foam inserts and this plastic little cover that come with this projector because it hauls around really nice and it protects your two lenses in this thing. So kind of important, <laughs> kind of important. Comes with a really nice remote. I really like the simplicity of this. You know, you've got your sources, you've got your volume, you can mute it, you can get to your settings. It's just a really good remote, real easy to navigate. You can go to home and adjust some things. So also a Bluetooth speaker, you can get to that and we'll get to that in a little bit. Here is your power brick. So I've got these loosely tossed in here. I do wish that this power brick came with a Velcro strap. So you could wind your cords up and then strap it because you're going to be setting this thing up and tearing it down quite a bit. So I did, I do wish that it came with a, a Velcro strap that's reusable. That way you don't have loose cords like I have right now, but that's super simple. Run to the hardware store, get one. You've got a USB-C to USB-C cord with a USB-C port. And we'll get into these ports on here. Honestly, you could do a whole just separate video just on this projector. The build quality is pretty freaking good. There's a lot of little features and options to it. Uh, yeah, I got this all tangled up. <laughs> so it does come with an HDMI cord as well. Um, so it's really nice that it comes with the cords that you are going to need. The only one that I'm that I'm missing that I would add to this would be a 3.5 millimeter male to a 3.5 millimeter male just in case you want to run separate speakers out of the headphone jack which you could do but the two 8 watt speakers on here are pretty dang good they're the best speakers i've seen on a projector yet now this is going to be your tripod 
And we've all kind of experienced these, especially if you film YouTube videos. This is your generic tripod. Um, they work, they get the job done, and you could definitely upgrade this to something a little more adjustable. This is probably the first place that I would ding this on. I really do wish that this tripod had a ball joint or a ball mount on the head. So when you set this up, you can actually really easily adjust the left and the right. That's one thing I would add to this is maybe get a separate ball mount from another tripod and mount that on and get it mounted to this. And that would make setup a little faster and easier. But it's a good tripod. It's better than nothing. <laughs> so pretty cool. Now, projector time. So pop these off. I would keep these. They work really, really well for storing this projector and locking this cover down on your projector. So it, that's my recommendation <laughs> when I buy one of these. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to buy it version one or version two. We'll see how long it takes me to save up the money because that's the number one thing. This is a portable projection system and it's $1,300. It's $1,299. That is a lot of money. That's a lot of money. But with the current situation in the world, my wife and I were trying to be smart with money. And this is something that we are interested in and we are going to try to acquire. But we also have to consider, you know, the uncertainty of the future. So <laughs> this is really cool, though. Oh, my gosh. It comes with this nice little plastic cover after I get done with my rant. I would keep this cover because it's a nice dust cover. It'll cover all, you know what, let's pop this off. It'll cover your projection lenses. Now it's a short throw projector, guys. Check this out. It's got two lenses. It's got your projection that comes out of here and then it hits a reflecting lens. Don't touch it with your fingers. Don't wipe it off, blow it off, okay? So this is dust proof and splash proof. So you can kind of blow this off with a hairdryer on a cool setting. And that's what I've done after the weeks of testing. Check this out. Look at this. Here's your adjustment. There's not a whole lot of adjustment, but this is designed for a, you know, like I want to say like a 55 inch screen up to a hundred inch. I wouldn't try to push this to 120. I tried it. It didn't work very well. <laughs> so picture quality was a little arced and for good reason. The lenses are arced. You're going to have that. So right here you have a nice little touch panel. This is, there's no buttons. It's just touch. So it's like it reads the... Uh, the conductivity on your fingertips when you touch those and it'll get it going. Let me flip this around. It's a nice little projector. Um, here is your main power button. So you'll click that and then you'll come over here and this is your Bluetooth speaker button. This is your main power button for the projector. So you've got your headphones right here and these are like a hard polymer covers for covering all of these little ports. And I wanna say that they're gonna be all right, but I can see myself snapping these off, especially if the projector's cold. Um, I would like to see a soft silicone cover over these ports, but honestly, I'm only gonna be using the headphone and then probably the HDMI one. Maybe I'll use the USB-C since I have a Mac, but we'll see. So. You've got headphones, HDMI 1, HDMI 2, USB-C, and then you've got this power in. So it's a 5 amp, 19 volt DC in, which is your power supply that's included. And then you've got this trigger out. If it was up to me, I would put tape over this trigger out. I would get some of my gaffer's tape and tape over that because you could accidentally plug in your headphones to this port and it's a 12 volt trigger port you don't want to do that it mentions it in the instructions i agree with them i would uh i would just put some tape over that unless you're going to be using that feature often so kind of dummy proof it right over around on the other side of this projector 
It's got nice little vent ports on both sides if I didn't mention that. So what do we got here? USB-C power out, USB and a USB. What's this one? Not sure what that is. Doesn't look like anything. Hmm, well, that's interesting. So I'm not sure what that port is. Probably says in the instructions. So two USBs and there's a USB-C power out. So you can use this to kind of power up some devices. Right on the back, there's nothing. Uh oh, I'm trying to turn it on. Look at that. That's one thing I have. Uh oh, <laughs> let's turn that off. It's real easy to tap these buttons. So let's flip this over and then we'll talk about the buttons. Now it does have a mounting plate on here and it's got quick start instructions. I left them on and you can see the tripod scratches on there. So it's pretty simple, kind of gives you an idea of how to set it up, hook it up. It's a nice little mounting plate. Don't cover these ports, okay? That's your ventilation and you're gonna wanna keep those clean. If you see any dust and debris in there, you wanna get that out of there. It's got these nice rubber feet. Look at this. This thing is fully adjustable. You don't have to use the included tripod. You can set it on a box or a crate, or if you're lucky enough to get your screen up high enough, and we'll talk about that in the future, you can set it on a tabletop and use it that way. As long as you don't have any books or anything covering these ports and frying the projector, because these things require airflow. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a really nice projector. One, well, two things with the projector. We'll just get this out of the way. When you go to adjust the focus, I have a bad habit of getting my hand in front of the projection and I have to take my hand away, check it, come back, test it, go back, adjust it, check it. And it. I wish the adjustment knob was off to the side. So if it was off to the side, I could just come up here and zinc, zinc, zinc and adjust it really fast, really quick. Um, it's not hard to adjust. On mine, I just scroll it all the way to one side because I got a smaller screen and it's good to go. So the other thing on these projectors, when you go to turn this on and it's on a tripod and it wiggles side to side, I found myself trying to put my finger up here to brace myself to push this button because it's a little hard to push, you know? There's a nice solid button to do the main power and then to actually activate the unit. I found myself putting my finger up here on this little touch screen display and activating features that I don't want to activate. So I wish that, you know, this button was off to a different location or maybe this touchpad was on the opposite side. That way I'm not bracing myself like so. But if it's on a dedicated location or maybe you mounted it on the ceiling and inverted the screen, which you can do, it's not a big deal for you. Then you just turn that on and just use the remote and you'd be good to go. But a short throw projector, what's that mean? This, the screen sits right here. That's how far this thing has to be from the screen. It's insane. And the instructions actually, if you don't believe me, check this out. <laughs> this is really cool. Look how far this has to be from the projection screen. 3.15 inches. Look at that. So there's no more, someone walked in front of the projector and blacked out the screen and just interrupted the movie. There, there's no more of that with this. And that is what made me fall in love with it. The other thing is you don't have an, a projector fan sitting back by your head or in the back of the room, sitting there circulating air. You don't get that sound, it's all up front. So your speakers will cover that sound up <laughs> really effectively and efficiently. It's pretty cool. So that is what is in your main little projection package. Let's take a look at the screen and then we'll get this set up and we'll take a look at the quality. All right, so this is hands down the best screen I have seen yet. <laughs> and I keep this in the projector bag you could probably keep it in your projector frame bag, I guess you'd say. Comes with a nice little case here to keep it kind of neat and tidy. 
And this came with a projector. It's a little bit of a like a microfiber cloth and some instructions. I wouldn't touch those lenses. I'll, I'll reiterate that. Don't put your fingers on those lenses. There's a very special coating on there that makes it have a beautiful picture. If you touch it, you wreck it. So follow your instructions. I'm not gonna read them to you. <laughs> so pretty cool. But one thing about this screen, it's kind of like a, a vinyl type feeling screen. It's got heavy duty snaps. These remind me of a boat or a tarp snap. These are not your shirt button snaps. These are not little baby snaps. These are very industrial feeling snaps. It's got nice little poles on here, nylon poles. It's a vinyl type screen. So the more you fold it, the more creases you get into it, the more you're gonna have to fiddle with it later to try to get the molecules back to being flat. I ended up setting the black side out on, stretched out on the frame in the sun, and then I brought it in, I let it cool down, and that gave me a per, almost perfect, almost perfect flat surface. So there are some creases with this screen. However, it's not a transparent screen. So a transparent screen will just take and absorb light and not reflect it back to you and give you that crisp, bright picture. This, on the other hand, will reflect back a huge amount of light. So it's one of the brightest, it's one of the nicest sounding projectors I've seen yet. And it's a short throw? What? What? So it's, it's really, really cool. And uh, I can see why they're charging with the charging. So your bag, it's got nice little carry handle straps right here so you can secure it and not have them all have to grab on one side and grab on the other side um oh my gosh it's it's pretty freaking cool and one of my camera batteries is dying but I'll just keep going here until it drops out unzip your bag and in here you've got your frame and you've got your legs right so here's one of your legs here's your other leg right here things are super cool. Oh my gosh. Whoever designed this was really thinking. There's only one change I would do. And then we'll take your bag away. Oh, almost forgot. I always forget about these. Here's your screws for your leg mounts to your frame. So top, bottom. Pretty cool, right? How am I going to do this? I'm gonna, I want to show you how to set this up because they've got these really cool blue anodized little frame locks on here. And they're really cool. This thing pops together. <laughs> really, really cool. So let's get this set up. We'll snap the screen on it and then we'll take a look at the quality. All right, so on your frame, it's going to hinge out like so. Check this out, look at this. Now these blue tabs, as you look, they're anodized and they'll lock. Look at that, clicked in, right? Now you've got these corner supports, you just come down, pop, pop, top supports, pop, pop. And then, <laughs> this is this is gonna be kind of fun, I'm not gonna lie. So, it's got another hinge, check this out. Done, that part's done. So, I'll take and I'll flip this thing over here, and you've got your screw holes on the back side, and this is your front side, it's got your snaps on it. So, you'll take, you grab one of your legs, you'll fold it out like so, click and lock them in, super solid. <laughs> There's only one thing that I would change. You put that in, and you'll take, screw in your little, real threaded, nice screw, it's got really, deep detents so you can really get some purchase on it. So screw in your leg bolt, tighten it down, and take the next one. Oh wow, that one snapped all together really fast. And drop it in. You notice how I'm doing this upside down? <laughs> if you try to do it the other way, you might need two people. But I just step on the bottom, I'll brace it with my thigh, I'll grab this, I'll put the screw in. 
and I'll be good to go. So you can set this up single person, flip it over, make sure not to hit anything because this is aluminum. So if you have low electrical lines wherever you're at or light fixtures, you'll get hurt. So let me show you guys how to pop this screen on. Super simple, super simple. Grab your screen, and the more you fold this, the, the worse off you're gonna be. I'll reiterate that. So, on here, there is a logo. So right here, this is gonna be the bottom. It says Elite Screen on it. Flip it over. I guess top or bottom, it, it's really up to you. But I like to keep low, uh-oh, drop something. I like to keep logos where they're at. So, just start snapping on here, and I drop. I'll drop my phone. That's not good. So, take your snap, bring it up here, snap it up. It's got quite a few of these. Let me step in front of the camera. And it actually will take, and I'm gonna show you guys this in real time, it'll actually take and stretch. Because as you guys can see, I'm pulling tight down here. You guys are looking at it and it'll actually stretch this screen so it's not just a loose saggy fit it is a super precise job on the screen fitment it's those little attentions to detail that i really like so oh wow it's really pulling some wrinkles out All right, so you guys can see I got some wrinkles right here because of how I folded it. That one's on me. <laughs> I really should have been a little more careful. Now, if I set this out in the sun and I heat it up on the backside on a nice sunny day, bring it inside, let it cool down, those will dissipate and kind of go away. But that's something you guys need to think about if you're considering one of these little setups. Um, Try to be as honest as possible and realistic as possible. Sure, would I like this to have been rolled up in a tube? Yeah, but if I drop that tube on the end, I'll scrunch the end of the screen, so you're still gonna have a little bit of crush here or there. So, I'm gonna get you set up so you can see the tripod set up. All right, guys, so for your projector setup, I just take, pop the tripod out, I leave the legs, all the way up some of those got down somehow that may be in that may be a previous setup i'll pull out the tripod mount the quick disconnect and i like to leave that little plastic cover on here when i flip this over especially if you're going to do it on a ground or a table because you never know if there's some dirt or debris on there and like this i'm going to set this dip right down on the ground last thing you want to do is have dirt and debris get all over your lenses because <laughs> you're gonna have to blow it off and it's just not gonna end well so I'm gonna screw this on here and these have always fought me every time you know you get them up they're nice when they're on and you only really need to put this on one time but I wanted to show that so you'll take your projector you'll pop it on Try not to drop it. Hopefully it's on. Oh yeah, there we go. So I should have set it up the first time. So you guys see how I have this little angle set up right here? So I can rotate it left and right. Most people will try to put this on so they rotate up and down. I guess you could do that, right? But I found more of an adjustment left and right with this projector. In order to get it going so I really should plug something into this but I left my fire stick over at my dad's because he needed to borrow it so push that side button try to brace myself so I don't push my buttons and I'll push this button here and we'll start testing the fit I should probably get uh, wow it's pretty dang close you guys can see and this projector 
likes to have a source plugged in so it can view it and adjust with it. So what searching inputs. Let me get some stuff hooked up to this and we'll get into a better setting and we'll show you the quality of this and show you the quality of the speakers. All right, so we're back. I ended up having to go to my dad's and get the Fire Stick. I tried to hook up the MacBook Pro with the USB-C cord and it didn't work. So I got the background of the MacBook Pro. I got the audio, or I guess I got the wallpaper and the audio. I just didn't get the video from the MacBook Pro through the USB-C. So I'll probably need a Thunderbolt 3 to HDMI adapter to make that work, but it's all right. Been using it religiously with the Fire Stick. So let's check out More Fun Every Day. This is my buddy Joe. Absolutely love this guy. And he's just getting into YouTube. He does 4K video, really awesome edits. Just a little shout out to this guy. And we're gonna use some of his footage. So hopefully he doesn't mind being on my channel. But check this out. <laughs> turn it down for a second and there is actually 10 levels of volume on here but I want to reiterate how crisp and clear this picture is so Joe is using a I believe GoPro Hero 8 plus black shooting in 4k and it's really good footage that's one of the reasons I chose his channel is well, one he's a really cool guy and I like him and number two his footage is really good. He's got some really good music and stuff in there to test the audio. Those two 8-watt speakers are pretty sweet. Honestly, this is one of the best projectors I've seen for the portability factor of it because it comes with a screen, it comes with a stand, it, it's got really clear, crisp picture. You do get a little bit of an arc up at the very top, but it's not that big of a deal. If you can see all the way up in this corner right here, there's a little bit of a drop. It's not that big of a deal. And over on this side right here, let me get my finger in here, you can see there's an arc. So there's my buddy Joe. <laughs> really cool guy. Absolutely love that guy. But so far, this projector on all these output levels. Some ants? We saw a snake I didn't capture it on camera. <laughs> I, I hope the audio actually, wow, it gets, it gets pretty loud. So let's pause Joe and it gets, it gets pretty loud. So I plugged in and used my two JBL boom boxes and two JBL Extreme 2s with a flip four. That was epic. That was way too much sound for what I needed. It was, <laughs> it blew you away, right? So the two little speakers there are super awesome. Right now we are running, uh, we'll get a picture of this in a minute, but right now we're running a Fire Stick remotely. So it's just the unit power and that's it. So I've got the USB plugged in. Hey, you know what? Let's, let's move down real quick, hang on. All right, so we kind of changed angle here. So you can see I'm running the USB for the power out and then over here to the Amazon little fire stick and right into the HDMI. This unit has an onboard battery. It's like 3,000 or 37,000 milliamp hour battery. It's pretty big. Now it does have a light right here and that will indicate green, you know, a certain percentage, orange, middle ground and red. So. I did notice that I only get an hour and 13 minutes of runtime. 
with a setup like this, <laughs> trying to watch some video. So they say you can get up to three hours of runtime. And I would imagine that's if you decrease the brightness of the, the, the screen and you didn't have the volume blasting, or maybe they're just getting the three hours off of the Bluetooth, but an hour is pretty good. I mean, if you did have a little power outage or anything like that, you know, this would get you through it as long as you have power to your internet, granted with that setup. But if you're running it off of a laptop that has its remote battery, then you wouldn't even know. This thing would just kick into battery mode. You'd have it plugged in, of course, and boom, it would just keep going. So pretty cool little unit. I'm really happy with, pan up here, I'm really happy with the screen. So with my bright shop lights just on, on this side of the shop, you can still see the picture. Granted, it isn't as dark or as colorful, but you get that with a lot of projectors. So it's a really nice little setup. I do wish that they had height adjustment right here on the side of the screen, or maybe you could buy additional legs that would have a height adjustment so I could get it up over that workbench and just set it up out here, leave it out here, and utilize the top of that workbench for this unit. While I'm out here working, I could be watching Joe's videos and enjoying them, you know? That'd be a nice little thing. Maybe if you're camping, it would be nice to be able to take and get that up a little bit higher in case you're camping with some tall grass. And the only place to set the projector up is kind of in the weeds. It would be nice to get the screen up just a little bit higher because you have so much adjustment with the tripod and it makes sense to have a little bit of adjustment on your screen. So maybe they could take and include that in version two, but I, all in all, I really like the projector. Um, the battery runtime isn't three hours for a movie, so keep that in mind. But all in all, I really do like this little portable projector. It's a short throw, so you guys see there's nothing in front of it, and I can reach up and touch the screen. So <laughs> it's really, it's really cool, you know? There are some little hiccups here and there, but honestly, this is hands down the crispest picture I've seen yet. It's the best sounding projector I've seen yet, and it feels of super quality. So I would recommend it if you guys have the money. <laughs> this is pretty expensive. My wife and I, we are sitting there bickering back and forth. I'm like, we should just buy this. And she's like, I know, but we can't afford it right now. So eventually I'll try to pick one of these up. Looks like she's going to sleep. <laughs> Eventually, I'll try to pick one of these up. And honestly, I'm really happy with it. Now, it's not a full cinema portable theater, but it is a very crisp picture, good quality sound. And it, this thing is like 55 inches. So it's a pretty big screen to be that portable in two little bags. And you can set it up anywhere. So, Nick here with GearNut. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this little video. If you guys have any questions, hit me up in the comment section below, and I'll try to hook you up and take care of anything I can answer. But, unfortunately, this has got to go back. I've really enjoyed my time with it, and I really wish I could do a year update on it, maybe in the future. So, I'm definitely going to try to purchase and acquire one of these and do an update later. That is one of my goals for the channel, so we'll see if I can do that. But big shout out to Elite Screens. <laughs> Honestly, the best projection screen I've ever laid hands on is this one. It's truly awesome. It just reflects that color back at you. It's super quality. Their projector is super cool. I love how you can just set it up right below the screen. It's, it just solves a lot of problems. So, Nick here with GearNut. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. I'll check you guys later.